Now we're standing on Africa's second longest bridge, nearly 12 kilometers from end to end. This technological feat not only connects two districts, but people as well. Speaking of good ideas, would this also be our 100th doing your bit? Yes, indeed, it is our 100th doing your bit. Now, doing your bit is the shortest segment on our show that we use to highlight initiatives, inventions, and just little ideas that are good for the environment. Absolutely. And do you remember leaf plates, balls and plates made from large leaves? Almost 80 million people watched this video on our various social media channels. Or the one about recycling and reusing concrete. Our viewers were thrilled. Indeed, they were thrilled. And let's hope we can once again please our viewers with this refreshing environmental idea. Guess what? We'll have a look and see what this company from Germany is doing with what remains from making apple juice. Straw Wars, when you can eat the enemy. Sometimes you really need a straw. But in most cases, they're fun but unnecessary. Straws may be small, but they add to the huge amount of plastic waste worldwide. They're especially harmful when eaten by marine creatures. Now you can protect the environment by eating straws yourself. Food engineering student Konstantin Neumann and his colleagues have created an edible straw. It's made from the leftovers of Germany's apple juice production. The entrepreneurs say this method would currently reduce the number of plastic straws in Germany by 50%. The startup already sells to restaurants, hotels, and supermarkets. They now have strawberry flavored straws and are working on a lemon one. And since it's all biodegradable, you can enjoy your drink with a clear conscience. Do you like that? If you are also doing your bit, tell us about it. Visit our website or send us a tweet. Hashtag doing your bit. We share your stories. Hi there. We are back again. And this time we're in the Ikorodu area mm -hmm. of Lagos, Nigeria, where we meet some people who are doing some wonderful things with very unique ideas. I'd like to introduce to you Sipasi Ayodele. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank you. Sipasi Ayodele's organization Protector Zone had a very brilliant idea. That's right. What they're trying to do is to show the people around here what they can do to protect our planet's atmosphere and at the same time improve food security for people living in urban areas like Lagos. So tell us, what are the support behind us doing and why? Africa is still facing hard poverty and also extreme hunger. By the year 2050, the population of people residing in the cities will, raise, um, will increase from 55% to 66%. So we'll be having about 10 billion people in, in the world and the majority of them will be in the city. So it's very important for us to feed them. And to get them fed well, you know, we need to strategically place urban farms within the city so that people can farm very close to their houses. So that is the overview of what we're doing. Protect Ozone has been around for three years now, and it's clear that you want to stop the growing of the ozone hole. But at the same time, you're involved in urban gardening and promoting food security. How do all these issues sit together? We need what we call sustainable agriculture, and we can only achieve sustainable agriculture through urban youth participation. Um, we're actually protecting the ozone layer through the use of waste materials and also innovations like the 50% water saving irrigation kits that you, you saw here. You get the youth to be a part of this. Do you pay them or induce them? And where does your funding come from? Well, um, the youth are so passionate. I mean, one of the greatest resources we have in Africa is our manpower, not only to grow food in the urban centers, but we're actually opening them up to 
opportunities. You know, we have our teams that have attended Young African Leaders Initiatives and stuff like that. So we create opportunities for them. And as touching our funding, we get a little fund from uh, international organizations to help fight extreme hunger and food security in the grassroots. The food security of a nation is the national security of, the, of that particular nation. So if we are talking about insecurity in our country, we need to go and produce more food to get people secured. So what we're seeing around here really is a lot of commitment. And there's no doubt that the participants here want to see the results. So how do you measure your success? One of our participants has about um, four city farms. You know, not in a particular location, about four city farms in different locations. You know, in Lagos State. So that is um, a success to us. And we have been getting testimonies that we have one of our participants that is actually financing his education from growing food in the city. And we also have... Um, some farms do contact us that they need competent people on their farm so they can actually trust us to produce competent people to actually be on their farms for more food production. So what's next? <laughs> well, um, currently we've affected a, a bit over 7,500 lives. So we want to go beyond that, you know. Um, and in the year 2018, we're actually looking at um, uh, opening up a thousand urban farms that is backyard farms in the city. And also, um, this our facility, we're actually looking forward to, to the completion of the facility, whereby we have full modules of sustainable agriculture as being practiced in the cities. So that is what um, we are actually aiming to achieve. Right. Yeah. Well done. All the best yeah. with that. Thank you. Thank you for coming <laughs> once again. And so there you have it. The pass is back at work. That brings us to our next favorite topic on the show wildlife mm -hmm. and our next report is in zambia which is not too far from where sharon lives right it's sharon? really not too far and it's about chimpanzees which are one of the species uh, that are in serious need of protection like many other animals in africa their habitats are being steadily eroded by people they come looking for farmland and for mineral resources or even sometimes to hunt ultimately the economic reasons are driving the threat to many Primates. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, people are now growing more and more aware of how important it is to protect these unique animals that are so similar to us in so many ways. <laughs> in so many ways. And you will get to learn just how similar we are in about a second. And our next story takes us to a reserve in northern Zambia that is providing sanctuary to over a hundred chimps, though they don't live exactly as they would in the wild. Time for lunch in the Chimfunshi Wildlife Orphanage in northwest Zambia. More and more chimpanzees are gathering in the trees close to the feeding station. The staff here prepare meals for the apes twice a day. Innocent Mulenga heads up the Chimfunshi Reserve. He's known some of the chimps since he was a child. The food is served at the station at the edge of the forest. The system is designed to make sure all of the animals are fed. Okay. We feed them in such a house because we want to separate the males from the females and the young ones because the males are dominant and they always want to eat everything. So this is why we separate them. Aside from the feeding times, the chimps live just like their counterparts in the wild. The fence encloses around 150 hectares, much of it undisturbed rainforest. The fence is there to protect the animals from humans. Poachers are the chimps' worst enemy. The core idea really is um, uh, for these chimps to have uh, a good home. Uh, this is why we have got all these big enclosures for them. Like in here, we've got 47 of them. And uh, we are there to provide protection for them because in the wild they are hunted heavily. But they are safe as long as they stay inside the Chimfunshi enclosures. Back in the forest they originally inhabited, the animals wouldn't survive long. Most of the chimpanzees at Chimfunshi come from uh, Congo, which is uh, like 18 kilometers from here. But in Congo there is lawlessness there, there are wars there, and so these chimpanzees are prone to poachers and people that deal in bushmeat trade. The Chimfunshi Wildlife Orphanage was set up in 1983 by a farming couple. A German entrepreneur later took over financing. Today, his family continues to ensure that the people here profit from the project. 
for example, with a school for the children of the sanctuary's employees. Good morning, class. We've got our workers here that work for the chimps, eh? and really there is no school anywhere near. So in 2007, we built this school so that their children can have a decent education. Chimfushi is not just about chimpanzees, but also about the humans, and this is why this project is looking at uh, helping the children get the required education. That costs money, which is why the project recently bought a nearby farm. On its grounds, fruit and crops are harvested to help feed the chimps, while cattle are raised to provide income. Kalita Kalwi also helps take care of the animals at Chimfunshi. She's Brazilian and has been living and working here for two years. We need to take opportunities like this of doing an enrichment or offering something different to be able to see all of them to have a good eye on it, to check for who is coughing, who is sneezing, who is losing weight. The animals aren't forced to interact with humans if they don't wish to. The idea is to let them live lives as free as possible from human interference. But some chimps need help and attention. Chiffon has a complicated past. Like the other chimp in his cage, he was unable to integrate into one of the bands here. Talita spends as much time with him as she can. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Chiffon is a former pet. He was with the family for very long, so he doesn't really know how to fit in a chimp family, how to behave like a proper chimp. He has the need to be with people and also to have some kind of interactions. Chiffon's group is slated to get their own large outdoor enclosure in the coming months. Just like other chimpanzees that have found a new home at the Chimfunshi Wildlife Orphanage. What a great project. It's so inspiring to see how it has created jobs and built schools at a health center. Yes, and it seems to be just what people need to make them more environmentally conscious. That's what we do here. But I'm afraid as it is time for us to go. Even this 100th episode must come to an end. Sharon, it was great having you here in Nigeria. It, Thank you. It was absolutely great to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. It was absolutely amazing. I wish we could do it every day. And I hope that our audience in Africa, in Europe, or wherever else Equat Africa can be seen, enjoyed it half as much as I did. Well, we'll see you again next week with more green ideas. Indeed, Sharon. I'm sure they enjoyed it. But if you want more information about us, go to our website or check out our social media pages from all of us here in Lagos. We do appreciate your feedback and any comments you have concerning our show. Bye-bye from both of us and the crew here in Lagos, Nigeria. Bye.